All right, so we are going to open up the Darwin's torso and take a look at some of what's inside. We've already removed the nylon handle strap. It's just a simple little slide through thing like that. I can't, I can't actually see the camera, so hopefully that was in frame. And let's remove the battery. Same little screw gate as the original Darwin. And it comes with the standard robotic screwdriver. Uh, anyone with a Darwin or a Bioloid kit, this will be familiar. Nothing special there. It's just a Phillips screwdriver. So let's undo two screws that hold the back plate onto the frame. And just like the original Darwin, we've got four screws in the corners to hold the front and back pieces of the shell together. And if we lift this up, pull out the two little cables in there, and I'm trying to make sure these screws don't fall out. You can see in here we just have the uh, the fan controller, and there's mounts for the those three buttons on the back. And this is basically exactly the same as the original Darwin's, just with a different configuration for the holes. Same two cables. And inside, let's see if we can get the front panel off. So it's fun getting the arms lined up. There we go. The front panel still has the speaker wire. So inside of the front panel, the button right there for the uh, the reset for the main board. And there you can see a bare chested Darwin up front. On the back, um, it looks like right here, uh, there's actually a hole for where a VGA cable could go. Uh, some of the early versions of the Darwin II that uh, were floating around in Rebo demos at RoboCup last year did actually have a VGA cable on the back, so obviously they made the decision to change that. Over here we have the mini HDMI. Uh, in the unboxing video yesterday I said it was an HDMI. It's actually a mini. Uh, slight annoyance because we don't have a mini HDMI adapter in the lab, but we can buy one of those easily enough. And let's take a look at some of the internals. Let me just get another screwdriver. So to take apart the torso, first thing we have to do is undo these three screws that hold the top and bottom halves of the frame together. Uh, for those of you who've ever done this with the original Darwin, um, in the old version these were uh, hex nuts, uh, hex bolts rather. Uh, this one, they're Phillips. I'm not entirely sure why they changed that, but they're nice little flanged Phillips screws that fall straight through the leg cavities. There it is. Don't want to drop screws on the floor, they're impossible to find. Flip it over. And three more screws on the front. holding the top and bottom halves of the torso together are the cables themselves, which I probably should have undone some of those first. Let's uh, start unplugging some of those before we get too carried away. So up top we've got, right here we've got the five TTL cables. Uh, this is a CM740, not a CM730 like the original Darwin. Uh, I don't know what the exact differences are other than the CM740 looks to be much smaller. Uh, I'll send an email to Robotis and hopefully they can let me know. Some of these cables are not a lot of give. And we've got a big bundle of cables over here that's, that just sticks around. We've actually got a 
cable tie here that's holding the TTL cable for the leg onto the top half of the torso. Oh, I don't know how I'm gonna... I don't want to start cutting the uh, cable ties. But, if we just carefully lean this back, you can see some of the uh, internal structure, the, the new main controller board. We've got what looks like a very large either heat sink or an insulator on the middle there. Um, this is a dual core processor in this model, so it is going to give off a fair bit more heat. Uh, they've moved the wireless card. Instead of being mounted physically onto the fit PC like the old ones, uh, the wireless card looks to be mounted over here with a detachable antenna plug right there. Uh, it runs up through here. The antenna's back over here in the right shoulder, same as the old Darwin's. Reset switch is on a standalone little PCB right there, uh, connected to the main board with, a, again, another little cable with a white jack. And, yeah, it's hard to get a good look in here without completely dismantling the whole thing. Let's see if we can figure out how to do that. Hello again. Uh, finished dissecting the Darwin. Uh, we didn't have the camera rolling for all of that, unfortunately. We had a lot of hands in the way and it wouldn't frame very well. But uh, I'll show you what the insides of the Darwin 2 look like now that we have it uh, mostly opened up. We didn't disconnect absolutely everything, but this will give you a good idea. Alright, so here we have the patient. Uh, you can see the torso is mostly opened up. And right here, that's the underside of the CM740. Uh, like I said earlier, this is a new version of the CM730 that's present in the original Darwin. Um, I haven't had a chance to ask Robotis what the precise differences are other than the physical size. Um, not much to really see on this side of it. Um, just lots of connectors and surface solder mounts. We've got the five TTL ports right along here. Uh, but other than that, not too much to say about that board. Moving over, this is the new main processing board uh, with the heatsink removed. You can see, and this is the back of the board here with the Ethernet at this end, the two USB ports, the mini HDMI over there. I've got a battery down there for the clock. So I believe that's what that is. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. And looking at the top, we've got, again, it looks pretty much like any other typical computer board. Uh, over here, I'm not going to actually touch it, we have a dual core Atom processor, so twice as many cores as the original Darwin, which is a nice upgrade in terms of computing power. And on the underside of the board, this is where things get much more exciting. On the underside, we have user replaceable RAM right here. And I believe this is four gigabytes of RAM. Yes, it says right there. So I, I, if memory serves, that's four times as much RAM as the original Darwin's. Again, nice hardware upgrade there. And over here, so come on, focus. Everything's moving around. Over here, we have a user replaceable solid state drive. So uh, unlike the original Darwin where everything was soldered on and if you burned out the flash then you were pretty much history. Uh, here we have much more user maintainable and upgradable parts. Uh, I don't know what the storage capacity on this drive is. Uh, I'll look it up and put it in the video description. And just for comparison, uh, over here I have a fit PC that we've taken out of an original Darwin. Uh, this one had some problems when you had to replace it. Uh, you can see over here there's some, you sort of see there's some scorch marks we had to replace uh, this capacitor right there and generally this board failed so we bought a new one and replaced it. But you can see physically the old, oh, sorry, the old board is a fair bit larger in footprint than the new one. And there's the wireless card, something else I'll show you in the new Darwin, is actually mounted directly onto the underside of the board. Got the processor over there, RAM, solid state drives, all that good stuff. And 
over here we there is a it, it looks like an SD card slot but it's not uh, I don't remember what the name of this particular port is um, so there was some kind of ex user expandable memory on the original Darwin's but it was very hard to get at you had to completely dismantle the chest because this is the front end of the board that's what you see in the back but over here on the new Darwin you can see that the wireless card is actually mounted directly to the chassis instead of to the underside of the circuit board. And they've had to add this little breakout board here with the, uh, that's the reset switch for the main board. So hopefully this gives you a good idea of what the uh, internal properties of the, the Darwin 2 look like. Um, I'll maybe open up the head and show you what the camera looks like. Uh, give me a moment and I'll go ahead and do that. All right, we finally managed to undo that last stubborn screw, and you can see here, we've got that same kind of crescent-shaped board. Uh, this will have the LEDs for the eyes and the forehead in it. And then if we swivel around over here, uh, we've got the Logitech USB camera connected there. Uh, again, like the original Darwin, it's mounted directly to the plastic faceplate. Um, I know a lot of people I've talked to that use Darwin's. That's one of their biggest complaints, and I'm a little bit disappointed that they didn't redesign the head a little bit. Uh, from the looks of it, this is exactly the same head as the original Darwin. Um, all the way down to the way that this triangular plastic piece is held in. Uh, there's just two pins and then a plastic clip on top. Uh, if you've ever worked with the Darwin's for any lengthy period of time, if they fall on their, their face, they tend to strike right around here, and this plastic piece will actually punch into the head. Uh, so you actually need to open up the head and reseat it if you want to keep that little cosmetic piece of plastic in place. So uh, I'm a little bit disappointed they re didn't make the head design a little bit better. But I'm not surprised they didn't, because uh, the number of other internal upgrades are not insignificant. Let's see here the MX-28 motors and the, the same shaped aluminum frame pieces as the original Darwin. It just the, changed the color of the external plastic. Other than that, it looks to be exactly identical.